In this video, my friend Josh is going to share the ultimate gear list for a portable church on a budget. Churchfront.com. This is a channel to help you grow yourself and grow your church. Never miss out on our latest content by hitting the subscribe button. And if you find this video helpful for your ministry, hit that like button as well. I'm excited to have my friend Joshua Shaw on the Churchfront channel to share some practical advice for purchasing portable and low budget gear for your church. Josh is a lead pastor at Lighthouse Church in Lakewood, Colorado. Two years ago, Lighthouse began as a small group of less than a dozen people meeting at Josh's house in his living room. Now they average almost 300 people in weekly attendance. Josh did not have a multi-million dollar budget to build his worship production system. Instead, he strategically researched and purchased gear that was inexpensive, portable, and reliable. I'm going to hand it off to him to tell you all about the ultimate gear list for portable churches. Are you a church planter, worship director, or pastor of a portable church? Are you overwhelmed by the thought of all the sound and video equipment you think you need to buy to ensure that your Sunday experiences are excellent? You're not alone. Nowadays, the expectation on portable churches and the quality of production they are to produce on a Sunday is incredibly high. And not just from Christians, uh, non-Christians expect excellence as well. They've been to portable outdoor concerts. They've been to a set up and tear down festival. They know quality can be accomplished on a portable system. So the question is, how are you as a pastor, leader, volunteer, supposed to buy the right equipment, organize it for an easy setup and tear down, and ensure that it is easily accessible for volunteers, but not sacrifice quality? Well, today is your lucky day. In this video, I'm going to share with you the secret sauce of portable equipment that won't destroy your church's budget and in fact will make your setup and teardown process a breeze. And get this, it will cost a lot less than what you think or what you're expecting. We'll first begin by discussing sound and lighting and then we'll move to band equipment and all the other good stuff with that. So here we go. Number one, mixer. Do not purchase a full-blown soundboard. Yes, we all know that the Behringer X32 is amazing or the newest mini DigiDesign or even the new Studio Live 32, which is really fun to look at. Do not buy them. They are heavy. They require massive hard cases. They're overwhelming to the average volunteer. And most important, they're just unnecessary. In a portable setup, you need to be as efficient as possible, which is why I recommend what's called the Behringer X32 Rack. You can rack mount this 32 channel uh, in a stage box or something like that for your musicians. You can attach it to a router uh, for Wi-Fi and your sound guys or gals can run the sound directly from an iPad. Uh, of course, there, there's no real faders on one of these iPads, um, but you know what? No one cares. Uh, when it takes your sound person 10 minutes to set up the sound instead of one hour because they're messing around with some ridiculous mixer, running cables, all that stuff, a little mixer with an iPad uh, is honestly your sound person's best friend, especially if they've never run sound before. Number two, in-ear monitors. Do not purchase additional in-ear modules such as the Behringer P16 or Avion systems and especially, please, for the love of God, church planters, do not buy wedge monitors. They are a waste, they're loud, they're awful. But what you should do instead is that from your X32 rack that I just told you to purchase, run up to eight XLR8 channels into an eight channel headphone amplifier and then you can run a 25 foot cable from that which is a headphone extension cable to each musician. Now the question becomes is how is each musician going to be able to control their mix and, and hear it in their in-ears, right? Well, remember that uh, router that I told you that you can connect to the X32 rack? Well, from that router, each musician can actually log in to that router with an app on their phone and they can actually control their own in-ear mix with the Behringer's free X32Q app or if you have a Midas version, uh, it's called the Midas M uh, X32Q. It's incredible. In the end, this setup only costs a total of $200. 
If you buy the headphone amp, the cables, and even a cheap set of in-ears for every single person, $200. That is cheaper than one P16 or Aviom system, which is just insane. So please save your money, go with some cables, and get the headphone amp. It's incredible. Number three, speakers. Do not purchase, for the love of God, low budget speakers that have uh, XLR inputs and especially subwoofers that have cheap XLR inputs. Just don't do it. And, and, and also, don't buy passive speakers. Uh, you'll be running cables for days, XLR cables and then power amp cables. It's just, it's way too much. You'll spend way too much time setting it up. And in addition to that, you'll actually spend more money if you have passive speakers on power amps that you will never ever ever enjoy because it's just way too much money so what I encourage you to do is buy yourself a set of 12 inch powered tops that have a cat 5 DSP technology built into them and buy yourself a set of two 18 inch powered subwoofers with that same cat 5 DSP technology um, now if you're curious what is the cat 5 DSP stuff it's really simple you actually don't even really need to know what it's used for but JBL QSC and other uh, companies actually fit this bill on speakers. But my recommendation personally is a company called TurboSound. They have TurboSound IQ speakers and subs. TurboSound and Behringer are actually owned by the same company, which is super awesome, and that means that their technology all works together. And so the way this looks is I want you to think about this for a moment. From your mixer, you will only run four cables that will run from the mixer itself to the speakers, and that's it. From the X32 rack, you can run one Cat5 from its P16 output to a speaker, and then from that speaker, you daisy chain to another speaker, and then to the subs, and that's it. Four cables for an entire sound system setup. And by the way, none of those cables are going to run from the front of house or FOH mixer because remember, you have an iPad doing all of that for you. Your sound person is going to love you and their setup is going to be maybe 20 minutes max. Four, lighting. Whatever you do, please do not buy a lighting board. And don't buy any lights at all that are not DMX. It's just a waste of time in your portable setup. And what I mean by DMX, if you can't plug like a cable that looks like an XLR into it, it's not worth it. Don't go to Home Depot and buy some lights. Online on Amazon and a bunch of other places, you can purchase a device called the DMX King that plugs into your lights uh, with the help of a Wi-Fi router. You can literally Literally trail one DMX cable to all 150 of your lights if you want to and then run from that DMX cable little box into a router that sends a Wi-Fi signal and an iPad app called Luminaire can run all of your lights. So think about this. Your sound person who just set up all of the sound can also set up all of your lights, which just has two cables plugged into it, and they can, from their little booth, run on one iPad all of their sound, and then on another iPad Pro, uh, Pro or whatever size you want, can run all of their lights. One person, less than 20 minutes. Mind-blowing, isn't it? And all of this only takes 30 minutes or so to set up, which if you think about it, it's just craziness in the portable industry world. You just couldn't imagine a 30 minute setup, but now it's super possible. Fifth, projection screens and different programs that you can use. So here's the deal. Less is more in the church plant world when it comes to projection. And, and, and if you notice, everything I've actually talked about already in this, uh, this video has been less is more, less is more. And so with the projection system, it's the exact same way. The best thing that you can do is buy a program uh, called Proclaim Worship Projection. It's cloud-based, it's monthly subscription, and it's like $150 cheaper per year than ProPresenter, which is incredible. And the greatest thing about it is that every single person at your church could access it on their own laptop, on their own iPad. It's just amazing because of the cloud compatibility. So with Proclaim, one of the things that's so great about it is that it's perfect for a portable church plant. Uh, you don't need a program that can run nine screens and LED wall technology. You need, as much as you don't think so, you need a projection software that can do lyrics, 
they can do a beautiful presentation that people can sing and you can do some video. And the best part about this is that this program is so cheap. It's like 19 bucks a month or something, which is awesome. And because you're a poor church planter, you love that price tag. For your projection screens, uh, this is kind of just going to sound really lame, but I recommend anything from an Amazon company called Elite Screens. They are so stinking easy to set up and your volunteers will love you and love the screen. Uh, my recommendation is, on the screens is that you just buy one big one and that's it. Don't buy two. Uh, having two screens is just a total waste of time. It's not appealing to the eyes for the audience. They have to look to the right or to the left. It's just way too much. And the fact that you have to have uh, HDMI splitters, extra projectors, it just causes way more setup time. And so if you can buy a massive screen, just one from Elite Screen, it's great. For your projectors, do yourself a favor and just buy the Optima Short Throw Gaming proje Projector. To be honest with you, you don't need to spend any more than $700 on a projector. And I know the word gaming kind of freaks some of you guys out a little bit, but trust me, this short throw projector can literally send up to 300 inches of projection in less than eight feet. It's crazy. So buy that projector. It's cheap. It's short throw. Uh, it really, and when I mean cheap, it's less than $700. So if you're thinking you're going to have to spend $5,000 on some projector because you think you're going to have some mega screen, don't do it. It's a waste. It's unnecessary by the one I just recommended for you. So now's the part where we're gonna talk about the actual music gear. Here's the section that most of my musician friends, and trust me, I'm a musician as well, you guys will hate me. Uh, what I'm gonna say is gonna break every single cardinal rule of musicianship, I get it. But in a portable church setting where volunteers are running sound, your worship director literally knows nothing about the overall equipment that you're using. What I'm going to show you and tell you is these are the best practices for a great setup, a great teardown, and the easiest Sunday experience possible even though you're going to sacrifice a little bit of your pride to make this happen. All right, rule number one, absolutely no guitar or bass amps. Uh, there isn't a point. Uh, every single amp creates way too much stage noise. And in your uh, tiny little elementary school with your home-built stage or your rec center or your gym, they're going to just be way too loud. The sound guy is going to hate you. It's just going to be crazy. So rather than having this massive amp off to the side, do you remember that X32 rack that I told you to buy at the very beginning? Well, that rack is likely mounted in a portable rack case with wheels. And I bet it has plenty of space for additional rack equipment. And in those rack spaces, that's where you're gonna put the amps. For your bass guitar and your electric guitars, I recommend buying a Line 6 amp modeler of some kind. They're called a, a POD rack. And then they actually the POD rack Pro is perfect for portable setup. They're created for studio use and they make wonderful amp sounds and they modulate all of these great sounds. They great, sound great in in-ears and for your guitarists and bassists, honestly, they won't hate you too much because it'll at least sound decent in their in-ears. If you're a bassist and a guitarist, uh, the only thing that you actually have to bring is your pedals and a few of your cables. No more heavy equipment, no more anything like that. And so if you're thinking, oh no, I don't know if I like this, think about every single Sunday at six o'clock in the morning, wheeling your ridiculous half stack into a, a rec center. After one year, you will love that all you have to do is plug in to a rack mounted amp. It's incredible. Uh, second rule is absolutely no live drums. Technology is just way too good for you to blow the face off of the front nine rows of people because you have this weird shielded drum set that literally the shield does nothing anyways. It just goes up uh, uh, away from the drums. It doesn't make sense to bring in a live set every single week, tune it, mic it, EQ it. It's just a waste of time, it's a waste of energy, and I can almost guarantee you, your sound person is not going to know how to EQ a drum correctly. They're, they're not gonna know how to gate it, they're not gonna know how to do any of that. And so, what's the point of trying to make your really cool, awesome birch set sound great if in the end it's not gonna sound good through the speakers? But rather, what you should do is purchase yourself a hybrid drum set. 
Uh, one like the Pearl E Pro Live is great. Or, or buy a converter kit that will turn your live set into an electric set. Now, now, now I'm a drummer, and so the first thing that I'm, I would think when if I heard this would say, oh, oh, hold on a second, are you telling me to use an electric drum set? No. That is blasphemy. It's in like Second Exodus 14 or something like that. That's terrible. What I'm advocating for is turning your acoustic set into a set that has rubbered head triggers and cymbals, all about $1,500 worth, and then running those signals to the electronic brain, like an Alexis Ale uh, DM10 or something like that, and then you don't stop there. Everyone knows that the sounds on an electric drum set are terrible, especially in those cheap little brains. And so what you should do is buy a program called Addictive Drums, which is a drum modeling program that's used in studios and put it on a Mac or a PC or whatever, and run from that brain that has all the plugins from the drums and run that USB into the Mac so that way it can then simulate and turn your hybrid set into a MIDI controller for the addictive drums to simulate the sounds. Now the sounds that come out of addictive drums are 100% authentic recorded drums in a studio. They are incredible sounding. And you can run a right left output from the headphone jack of your laptop into the X32 rack and voila. You have studio perfect drums with a perfect EQ, level adjusted, right into the mixer. No more mics, no more XLRs, no more drum shields, no more stage volume, just delicious studio quality drums for $1,800. It's incredible. And if you think that's expensive, I wanna encourage you, go ahead and look up how much it would cost to buy yourself a decent drum set with uh, XLRs and a drum shield and then all the mics that come with that and then all the complaints that come with that high volume. And trust me, $1,800 is cheap for an incredible drum sound that any volunteer can adjust and you'll never hear again, oh, the drums are a little too loud. No, you could just turn them down, which is amazing. Rule number three, absolutely no UHF microphones. UHF microphones, wireless microphones, are great, but they are expensive if you want ones that are nice. And what I mean by UHF is they run on different frequencies uh, depending on which area of a city that you're in so they don't get interfered with, with through television. Usually what will happen is that you'll buy wireless microphones and they will not work in your situation because you aren't spending $600 or more. So I recommend from a company called Audio-Technica, they have a 2.4 gigahertz wireless system System. They don't receive interference and they sound great. Now on the wireless uh, Audio-Technica system, um, just make sure that if you buy that, you don't put it anywhere near another Wi-Fi router. Usually three feet or so distance away is completely fine. And the reason for that's simple, they run on a Wi-Fi signal. So if you've got Wi-Fi routers next to it, they'll get messed up, but if there's no Wi-Fi, you're good to go. It sounds incredible. So just make sure you keep it away from your X32 rack or your lighting router because you'll get some interference. But other than that, they're incredible microphones for the price and you really won't experience that interference issues. Well, there you go. I hope this list helps you in your purchasing process. Have fun researching, purchasing, and installing all of this great equipment. Thank you, Josh, for sharing your advice on the best gear for portable churches. If you are launching a new church anytime soon, I would encourage you to reach out to Josh directly as he does offer consulting services to church planters. You can connect with him at lighthousechurch.tv. If you found this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up button and share it with other church leaders who also may find it valuable. Don't forget to subscribe to the Churchfront channel to continue to receive content to help you grow yourself and grow your church.